Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and today I would like to show you the one game from round seven and also the, the standings after round seven, what happened and uh, and so on. So uh, these are the results. We had the uh, four games. Ding Liren won against Magnus Carlsen three uh, to one and he got the three points and Magnus Carlsen played like, uh, you know, a very, very happy chess. He tried everything like he played King's Gambit. Uh, he even played play um, Nimzovic defense which is totally uh, unpopular he played this against the Bill Gates so that was kind of joke against uh, Ding Liren but seems like Ding Liren um, doesn't have this kind of sense of humor and he crushed Magnus Carlsen in all these openings uh, Magnus just won one game uh, in the Sicilian uh, when in the second move he played F um, uh, he played F4 uh, and the other uh, results Jan Pomniashi won in Armageddon game against Alireza Firuzia. Maxim Vasiel-Lagrav lost uh, to Hikaru Nakamura also in Armageddon and Anish Giri. Uh, he won against Magnus Carlsen and he won against Fabiano Caruana, number one and number two in the world. Uh, pretty amazing because he lost all other games. Uh, and what more we can uh, say about this round? These are the standings after round seven. Uh, the same standings like after round six so doesn't matter the results in the top four uh, Hikaru Nakamura number one and he gonna play uh, in the semi-finals against Fabiano Caruana uh, as you see this is huge gap between these four top four players and the rest uh, ending Liren gonna play against Magnus Carlsen so again uh, but Magnus Carlsen said that uh, from now on we gonna see completely different Magnus he gonna play serious chess because he really really want to win win this uh, tournament so uh, this is what we have and also uh, these are a uh, final four uh, bracket where as i said uh, hikaru nakamura play against fabiano caruana uh, today uh, we're gonna show this some of these games uh, and also ding liren tomorrow against magnus carlsen so they have one day break uh, and here also invitational Magnus Carlsen prize fund, um, the first place 70,000 and so on. And we already know that Yanni Pomniashi got the fifth place and 22 and a half thousand dollars. Ali Reza Firuzia got um, $20,000 uh, and Anish Giri and Maxim Vashel Lagrav um, respectively 17 and a half thousand and 15,000 dollars. So this is what we know. And today I would like to show you the game between Ding Liren and his ranking uh, in rapid uh, chess 2836 he's number one in China uh, by ranking and number three in the world by ranking so definitely very strong player and as I said he just crushed Magnus when Magnus uh, you know play his happy chess and uh, it was it was just devastating uh, but let's see one of these games um, ending Liren gonna play as white in this game and his opponent Magnus Carlsen uh, world champion triple world champion uh, in the standard time format in rapid time format and in blitz time format his rapid ranking 2881 he's 29 years old norwegian and he's gonna play as black so without further ado let's jump into this game Ding Liren opens with e4 and now we have knight on c6 by magnus carlsen so nimcovic defense and we don't see that often, you know, on the boards, um, especially amongst the top players. Uh, but it's pretty funny. But after knight on f3 and d5 by Magnus Carlsen, we have the same position um, when Magnus Carlsen played against Bill Gates in 2014 uh, during the TV show. Uh, and he got the losing position after move, I think, seven or eight. He got the losing position and he managed to win. Uh, I made a video about that, about the dirty 
tricks and if you want to see this video just click over there and watch this is short game uh, but also pretty funny uh, and here Ding Liren definitely don't go for bishop on d3 like Bill, Bill Gates he don't defend the pawn he play e takes on d5 we have queen on d5 and now knight c3 harassing the queen uh, queen on a5 and now d4 so uh, controlling the center now this is the only central pawn we have bishop on g4 now uh, pinning the knight uh, and bishop on b5 also pinning the knight here and magnus carlsen just castle we have bishop takes on c6 and b takes on c6 and here h3 uh, queen on h5 by Magnus Carlsen so now uh, the bishop can't be taken because uh, the pawn is, is pinned uh, and bishop on e3 so uh, Ding Liren try to castle of course uh, we have knight on f6 developing the knight queen on e2 uh, and now bishop f3 uh, we have g takes on f3 so uh, look at this pawn structure so magnus carlsen have completely broken a uh, messed up pawn structure but ding liren as well however ding liren gonna castle on the queen side so it doesn't really matter for him much we have e6 and castle by ding liren king on b7 now uh, taking the king to the safety let's say uh, and here we have rook h on g1 so this rook now watching and g7 uh, so magnus carlsen cannot really easy uh, develop the bishop so pretty uh, sneaky idea we have h6 and now rook on d3 so lifting the rook and preparing it to move to the uh, to the b file which would be very very dangerous against the king and in this position magnus carlsen uh, should think about the safety of his king uh, it's gonna be very very p positional but he gonna get uh, lost game if he don't care so a queen a5 that makes sense at least for the engine maybe not for human because magnus carlsen just moved the uh, the queen opposite direction from a5 to h5 and, and from here queen actually is looking uh, at the pawns on h3 on f3 uh, so it looks like uh, the queen is happy here however engine uh, you know uh, make the suggestion that this king is in the danger other good move would be a uh, king to a8 with the plan of bringing the rook uh, to the semi open b file so all of that makes sense however magnus carlsen uh, has different plan and he play rook on g8 so defending g7 and now uh bishop can be developed uh, we have knight on e4 now attacking the the knight and also the knight uh, can jump for example to c4 uh, maybe that would be a uh, dangerous but also important thing now the rook is free uh, to go to b3 so uh, this has to be taken into consideration so any moves like for example knight on e4 are not really great because rook on b3 with check king c8 queen a6 uh, king d7 and only now repair the structure of the pawns uh, and the king is in the center not really the greatest idea uh, for black uh, we have bishop on e7 by magnus carlsen and here rook on b3 uh, king on c8 and queen on a6 so the same idea just the knights are still in this position so a uh, magnus carlsen don't want to you know fix the structure pawn structure of uh, of ding liren we have king on d7 and now rook d1 uh, so putting the rook on the same file with the king uh, we have queen on f3 so magnus goes for the for the pawn here uh, knight on d2 attacking the queen queen has to be moved uh, should be probably moved to the center like queen on d5 but the position is already quite difficult magnus prefer uh, to take the pawn on h3 and he actually creates the passed pawn but uh, does he has a a chance to e even move this pawn <laughs> i don't think so we have knight on c4 by ding liren king on e8 so running with the king to the safety again uh, we have knight on e5 again so uh, very active knight 
beautiful uh, outpost for the night and now of course a knight on c6 is coming uh, we have bishop on d6 so making a little space uh, for the king uh, knight on c6 as planned and now rook a8 uh, by magnus carlsen queen on b7 now attacking the rook king on d7 now rooks are connected and guarding each other and now knight e5 with check Taking the knight by bishop doesn't make any sense as we would have the discovered check with the attack on the knight. So losing the, the piece. So we have king on e7 and now bishop f4. Uh, we have queen on f5 by Magnus Carlsen. Knight on c6 with check king d7 and now bishop on d6. Uh, there is only one move so king on d6 and now knight goes back to e5. Uh, this is the threat here we have queen on f4 check king b1 and now magnus carlsen goes for rook g on f8 so he don't want to be checked uh, and in this position actually after making the move uh, he just resigned the game and he resigned the game because uh, there is a checkmate coming and it's forced checkmate in five moves queen on b4 and nothing can be done if c5 then we have a checkmate uh, and if king on d5 then f3 taking away the square from the king so king cannot escape uh, and checkmate is coming c4 this is a one way of checkmate and queen on c5 it's also a checkmate so uh all black can do is here queen on f3 but it's still a checkmate because rook on f3 uh, king on e4 now rook e1 and then king has to move back uh, king d5 queen c5 that would be a checkmate anyway so uh, magnus carlsen after the move you he just saw that and he resigned the game and and yeah as i said ding liren just didn't have that sense of humor he just crashed the, the magnus in the in this game and also in three other games but tomorrow uh, magnus promised that he gonna be very very serious completely different magnus so definitely we're gonna have uh, very exciting games tomorrow and, uh, and yeah thanks for watching and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike and of course uh, press subscribe smash the bell button and thanks for watching and see you in the next one